Okay, we start off with the Mr. Deck 70. This is a uh, size 10 wet fly hook. The Cocky Bondi. Now you may know that uh, it's spelt with a U at the end and many people pronounce it Cocky Bondu. But I have been corrected many times by Welsh fly tying friends that it's pronounced Bondi, not Bondu. So, black tying thread onto the hook shank. Go back to about there. Remove that. And we need some gold, fine gold tinsel I like to use here. There we are. So we tie this in. Silver side out. This is a fishing fly so we don't have to worry too much about getting this absolutely perfect. We go there like that then we can go back a wee bit. Then we turn our double sided tinsel over to the gold side. And we'll make two or three turns and then oops, back again. There we are. And we wind our thread back into it. Tie that off. Trim off that. And we'll just tack these down. There we are. Now what we want is we need to make a dubbing loop with our tying thread just there. We can hang that out the way now. That's for securing or for uh, making the peacock hurl body more robust afterwards. Now what we need is some really good peacock hurl like this. Look when you're buying peacock hurl look for these fibers that are nice and flat and lots of fiber on them. So they're really thick with hurl. These give the nicest bodies. But I'd just like to show you something. Uh, cut the pieces, a couple of pieces of card here. When you're tying your peacock curl in, if this is the point, you always tie it in with a point. The peacock curl is roofed shaped like this. So when you're tying two pieces in, or one piece, if you're tying one piece in, you want that roof with the hurl pointing backwards all the time. And if you're tying two pieces in, or more, you want to put them on top of each other like that and tie them in like that. So you get all the fibres pointing in the same direction. This gives you a really neat fly afterwards. Uh, if the fibres are going all over the place, uh, I don't think it looks that good. So you want to look for the two V sections and put them together like so. Turn that around, there we are. So we tie that in there. Right in to the tag. I'll just secure this down the hook shank. Leave enough so you can get hold of it and pull it off and go forward. There we are. Now, I always use a hackle plier for winding my peacock curl. Then you also get better results as well. So you want to line them to both up. As we said, you don't want them crossing each other. Uh, like that. I'll put the hackle plier on. There we are. Now what we want, we'll just let these hang there. 
I need to wind this up a bit because it's going to fall down as I rotate the vise. So now we rotate the vise and this also gives you a much neater body if you have a, a full 360 rotating vise. It means that you get such an even wrap on the peacock, uh, on the peacock hurl that uh, it becomes perfect. There we are, that's enough for us. Now we swap hands. One nice tight turn there, couple in front and then one more over the top and then we can remove the hackle player. And don't pull your peacock hurl off, don't snap it off, trim it off with your scissors because that will also give a much better result as well. There we are. There you can see all the fibres in the hurl are lying exactly as they should, all pointing slightly back over and going forward nice and even. Now, we take the dubbing loop that we put to one side. We need some wax. I like to keep my wax on top of my light and keeps it moist. And we just wax the thread. This will also make it a bit stronger. Now we twist the tying thread together. Now we want to go the opposite way to the peacock curl through the body with the wax again rotating the vise. There we are. Tie that off. Remove it. And that will strengthen the peacock curl. Now what we need, uh, the original hackle for the cocky bondi is a furnace hackle. And this is a wet bondi so I'm using a hen hackle. So strip off the fibres at the bottom. And then what we do is we take a tweezer on the point like this and we pull all the fibres back, brush them all back like this. Then scissors and we trim that off and then we trim up one side and up the other like that. Still not finished yet. Put the tweezers on again and what we do is we strip off the fibres from one side. Now we don't need that much hackle that's on there and perhaps those at the front are a little too short so we'll get rid of them. Then we'll tie this in. So close into the body, cross wrapping again, keep the hackle 90 degrees from the hook shank and then we go under and pull up the remainder of the hackle. Now that's too long so we're going to just trim that off because that will be difficult to trim off afterwards. There we are. Go forward. Then we need our hackle plier again. That's a bit too long so I'll just trim a bit of that off. Put the hackle plier on. And we'll start rotating. Now we want this hackle to lie slightly backwards. OK. 
Good. There we are. Then we wind our thread back again. Unwind it, sorry. So it goes back into the hackle stem. And we can catch that off. Like so. Remove the hackle plier. Once again, before we tie it in. Trim that off. it and a whip finish. Now if I'm doing wet flies I like to varnish them. You not see me varnish many other flies but wet flies and streamers and of course salmon flies I do. But dry flies and nymphs I don't normally varnish. I don't think it's necessary. There we are, that's the wet cocky bondu. Bondi, there I go again. Yeah, so we'll just pop a drop of varnish on that. Just a, I think it makes a whole lot of difference on a wet flight with a varnished head. There we are. And that's it. That's our little Welsh friend, the Cocky Bondi. Thanks for watching.